$500,000, the three-year-old Colts, one-mile pace, and a real superstar, maybe the horse of the year at stake right here in rock and roll heaven. Absolutely. The field looks like this, Lou. Shuby's place has the rail with Ron Pierce at 12 to 1. One more laugh. Tim Tietrick looks like to be the big competition for rock and roll heaven. Tim Tietrick on the bike at 7 to 2. Rock and roll heaven, 2 to 1. You will not get 2 to 1 on that animal. Dan Dubé is in the sulky. He's gorgeous, who was great on the New York Sire Stakes, but got culture shock last week against better horses, 10 to 1. Jim Morrill Jr. is in the bike. We will see Brett Miller at six to one. The six horse is Art and Charm. John Campbell, a long shot at 20 to one. Fred and Ginger, not to be confused with Ginger and Fred, of course. Not tap dancing, that's just what it is. Brian Sears at nine to two. BG's Folly, Dave Miller, 15 to one. And Rock and Image with Yannick Jingra on the outside at five to one. Now we can't see, uh, right now we haven't shown our graphics, but we can see the updated odds. Mm -hmm. Rock and roll have it at one to nine right now. They like, I think the betting public <laughs> likes the horse. I could be wrong. And one more laugh who was beaten rock and roll heaven is seven to one. And there's a couple of interesting things. Rock and image is 34 to one and has also beaten rock and roll heaven. Now, if you're big in the names, you could play rock and roll heaven and rock and image as an exact hunch. Not a lot of money here, but at one to nine, the horse looks great. Just wanted to point out, we thank the folks from Mohegan Sun, the, the, the new Racino here for our, our set here. And actually, yes. what, what this is, you can see it right here. It's a roulette wheel. This is a roulette wheel <laughs> that doesn't have. <laughs> so we spin Baby the lucky wheel. Shoes. Come on. And Heather joins us again <laughs> with a pre-race interview. Heather? Yes, you know, guys, the Righteous Brothers recorded if there's a rock and roll heaven, you know, they got a hell of a band. Well, there is a rock and roll heaven, and he's a hell of a horse. With the moves of Elvis, the talent of Jimi Hendrix, and the flashiness of Freddie Mercury, a bona fide superstar in standard bred racing has been born. What separates a good horse from a great horse? The things that we can see, uh, the determination, lung power, uh, the heart. But what separates him is when he sees a starting gate, you know, he doesn't like to get beat and he loves to compete. I'm gorgeous, can do nothing but chase. It's all rock and roll heaven winning the Little Brown Jug. We weren't even sure we were going to the jug because he'd never raced on a half before. But after the battle, we trained him at Yonkers and he was great. So we made a decision to go to the jug and I cannot tell you it was the most rewarding experience I ever had. The fans, the 45 to 50,000 fans that are there, they embrace harness racing, they love Jug Day, they love that race, and they make a great deal of uh, fuss over all the horses. And to win it in that environment and hear that cheering crowd, it really was uh, spine tingling. Rock and Roll Heaven has had an impressive tour schedule this year, from the east, up into Canada, and into the Midwest in front of huge crowds, always giving his fans something to scream about and leaving them wanting more. Well, his best performance obviously was in the jug. His second best performance was the uh, elimination in the Meadowlands Pace and Meadowlands Pace Final. Uh, those races were remarkable. His battle of the Brandywine race over a dreadful racetrack was remarkable. I um, mean, rarely ever puts in a bad race. With over 1.2 million in earnings this season and a mark of 147 and three, Rock and Roll Heaven has topped the charts as the best three-year-old pacing colt in the world. Can someone say paparazzi? You do the work, you know, you know what to do. If he's like the last couple of weeks, you know, he's, gonna, he's even going to be a real tough to beat. No doubt a win in a double platinum race like the Breeders' Crown will give Rock and Roll Heaven's Connection a reason to party like a rock star. Oh, Heather, <laughs> Rock and Roll Heaven getting ready for uh, his turn on center stage. Coming up in just about nine minutes as we get ready to go to post. Here's an updated look at the odds right now uh, from the... Uh, now, see a good gotta, portion of the crowd still on hand here, too, Steve. You know what you got to do here, Lou? See, if you're a better, you got to take rock and roll, have them put it on the bottom. Do a no-brainer. You do an all, uh, you do a yeah. dollar, all three. Sure. And hope somebody, one of the bombers, beats the, beats the one to nine Look shot. at the rest of the field. Yeah, that's no, a, yeah. Like, according to the odds board, nobody has a chance. Well, that's why they run the races and play the game. So stay with us. When we come back, we'll go to the post one more time. Another Breeders' Crown to hand out when we come back. 
At a beautiful clubhouse where they're nice and warm and oh, toasty. I'm so jealous of those people. Yeah. That's the, usually they put announcers inside the press boxes, right? Yeah, we, we thought it was beautiful. We've been enjoying the beautiful weather here at Mohegan Sun and Pocono Downs outside of Wilkesbury. And uh, since we've been away, it's down to uh, 1 to 5 from 1 to 9. 1 to 5, well, rock a and better. Heaven, yeah. You know, if I was a better, and I am, and I'm not a very good one, but I would tell you this, I would bet two, three, a 2 3 exacto box for my lungs. Like a nice $200, 2 3 exacto box. For your lungs? For my lungs. What's that mean? Well, it just it's with 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 verve and purpose. Oh, yeah. Okay. I thought uh, you were talking about a long shot. No, I was just talking about the, the first two. I two don't and understand three. half of what you're saying. I, I see your yeah, lips it, moving, but I don't hear you. I Let's go down you. to Heather in the paddock <laughs> to set this one up. She's been a lucky charm so far. Let's see if she can do it again, Heather. Hey guys, yes, I'm with Kathy Troy. She is the trainer and the owner of Art and Charm. This horse is very special to you. Probably an understatement, actually. Yeah, he sure is. I bought him as a yearling um, at the Lexington sale, and he's uh, uh, it's just been me and him ever since. And is it true? He likes beer and candy? What is the story with that? Loves, loves beer and candy. Mints, scotch mints, crunchy mints restaurant mints and then when I go to a restaurant I got to take a whole handful when I leave just for him but uh, he's a he's a loves his beer he absolutely loves his beer he hears a can crack open and he's like what, what about me what about me <laughs> <laughs> well I'm, I'm thinking that he probably had to take a breathalyzer this evening though in order oh, to race so yeah. I don't <laughs> no 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 there's no drinking today no 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 disorderly conduct today whatsoever no he, he had to behave himself but after the races, I think he's going to have one. I think, you know, he's going to appreciate and need one. <laughs> and so will I. Uh, thank you, Kathy, so much for being on the show. And good luck tonight. Thank you. We need it a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you guys. Did I see frost coming out of Heather's mouth? What was that all about? Is it that cold? <laughs> I saw. My goodness. You know what? As cold as it is, I, I could still go for some beer and candy right about now myself. <laughs> Sounds uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> we had enough laughs, but how about one more? There you, you go. Room? Take we it. We got room for one more? Yep. Okay. Let's have a look at the the second choice in the wagering in this event. Well, he's a little bit hidden by, obscured by the one, the 38 to one shot a little bit. Uh, Shuby's place. There he is, coming into his own. It is Tim Tietrich and one more laugh. And this horse is no chump. He's made more than a million dollars this year. He has been the, the chief competitor for Rock and Roll Heaven. And has beaten them before you as know, well. You know what's interesting? One more laugh, though, has broken three times on this same surface. Three times. Well, all right. Let's you want to let's take a look at the Meadowland space, and this shows you the greatness of a couple of horses. Let's hear right here. We're going to go by the quarter. Kyle Major has the lead on a screaming fast quarter, 25 and four, and Rock and Roll Heaven will clear. And the minute he clears. Yannick Jingrock comes out with Rock and Image and comes right out after him. So he had no breathing room the entire mile. And in the lane, you can see Rock and Roll Heaven is digging in. And off a perfect trip, Tim Tietrich with one more left comes. And it takes the entire length of the Meadowland stretch for him to get his nose in front at the very end. That's the heart of a champion right there. Wow, how about that finish? Yep. And with a couple of, you know, a couple of different things that might have happened there. Number one, is that had rock and roll heaven won that race and which he missed by a nose and also another race when he lost to rock and image he would have had a lot more money on his dance card as well here's how we see him and uh, this is just for fun obviously because uh, obviously there's a clear-cut favorite so uh, i like ginger and fred so i go with the male half of this uh, you're going to be stunned by this howard taylor uh Owner yeah. owned uh, horse. I go with Fred and Ginger. And I, you'll be stunned, but I went with Rock and Roll Heaven. Yeah. As did Heather. Oh. Uh, as did Greg. Mm, and Jennifer. Guess what? He's gorgeous. Because she thinks he's gorgeous. <laughs> he's gorgeous. Yeah, That's our not? picks. Yeah. But it's going. It looks like it's. It's going to be down to really a two horse race. And one more laugh. As now down to three to one. Let's go down to uh, Greg, who has uh, his pick and his analysis of this upcoming Breeders' Crown Championship. Well, guys, I was listening to you uh, talking about the Meadowlands pace, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, it was a race the horse really deserved to win, and he lost narrowly. And since then, he's been unbeaten. He's rattled off four in a row, a million two. And uh, I certainly think that uh, a victory here tonight could put him 
in that lead position in terms of overall horse of the year. So there really is a lot riding on this. And this is the horse I think a lot of folks came out to see tonight. Guys, we're seeing the best of the best in harness racing, but this is what they call the Glamour Boy division. And this is the now horse, Rock and Roll Heaven. So we get ready for the ultimate race of the night. $500,000 at stake for the three-year-olds. Let's take it upstairs. And once again, we welcome our nationwide television audience. <clears throat> the Pacers have reached the back stretch. And you are underway in the breeder's crown for the three-year-old Colts and Geldings Pacer Shuby's place is first to show on the inside moving up one more lap in between horses there also coming up is we will see into second now far outside getting up into position there is Fred and Ginger rock and roll heaven also in the outer flow fifth followed by rock and image then at the back of the pack here he's gorgeous art and charm and BG's folly the quarter 26 and one fastest we've seen all night here we will see has the lead but Fred and Ginger now takes it from him here for Brian Sears here comes one more laugh and Tietrick he's going after the lead rock and roll heaven right behind that as one more laugh clears also in the outer flow there we will see around the turn fifth there after that on the outside now coming up is Shuby's place further back there to he's gorgeous art and charm BG's folly 53 and 2 27 and 1 second pass impossible fractions up here rock and roll heaven is the new leader on the outside pressuring rock and image gonna slide into the pocket in front of one more laugh nice job there and one more laugh goes off stride that scatters the back of the pack third there distant from the leaders is Fred and ginger rock and roll heaven clear by two three quarters 119 and four 26 and two are you kidding me here rock and roll heaven is out here by four four trying to stay close rock and image Fred and ginger is third at the top of the stretch rock and roll heaven is extending his lead he's unstoppable he's untouchable he's unbeatable tonight rock and roll heaven a coronation in the breeders crown final wins it going away in 149 flat rock and roll heaven what a capper on the night. Yeah, what a great call by Jim Pavilion. Very exciting, very exciting, and a superstar performance from a rock star of sorts. You can't say anything beside wow, because that covers it. The fractions were insane 26 and 1, 53 and 2, 119 and 4, and this horse opened up on them. You know, you could tell the, the crowd, uh, the excitement here uh, really sensed it. They did. Uh, they know they're racing, they know their horse, and, and they were just uh, just thrilled to watch a real champion at work. It was amazing because you could actually hear the, the rising din of the crowd as, they, as the fractions came up on the board 53 and 2. Boy, it was something else. Okay, let's have a look at these at the stretch drive here it is around the turn and this is where Dan Dubay opens him up he'll tap him with a whip a couple of times and he's got four or five in mid stretch and the rest of them are all going for minor rewards because it's all rock and roll heaven you are looking at the 2010 horse of the year in harness racing yeah that was decided tonight especially when lucky Chucky went down earlier and we showed you uh, that race uh, earlier on in our broadcast. So the Breeders' Crown, uh, we'll be back with the official result and talk with a spectacular uh, driver and trainer and go down to the winner's circle and have more. When we come back from the Poconos, Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs right after this. Yeah, there's a rock and roll heaven. Well, there's the horse of the year. Rock and roll heaven is the way it looks on this great night of Breeders' Crown racing from Mohegan Sun and Pocono Downs. Dan Dubay, heck of a story how he got back in the bike uh, to ride this great champion and drive this great champion to this championship tonight. Let's go down to Greg Blanchard now with his analysis on the big one. Well, guys, we certainly did save the best for last tonight. Uh, an electrifying performance tonight by Rock and Roll Heaven. As the season wears on, he's just getting better and better. And uh, tonight, Dan Dubay drives him with a 
supreme confidence in here. Look at the move to the front in the second quarter of the race. He's used hard here, but Dubé simply wants to keep the Colt out of trouble. And once he clears to the lead, it's lights out for the competition. He simply bottoms out the field three quarters in an unbelievable 119 and four. And you could hear the roar from the crowd right here as he begins to pour it on and widens his advantage as they come to the wire. Dan Dubé, as mentioned, an absolutely wonderful story this season. Uh, Dubé <laughs> sidelined with an injury earlier in the year. He lost the drive uh, briefly while he was recovering. And here he is back in the Breeders' Crown Winner's Circle as we get a look at the horse uh, <laughs> making his way back after that scintillating victory. And the man of the hour is with me, Dan Dubé. And uh, Dan, uh, first of all, has the horse ever been better than he was tonight? Uh, last couple of weeks has been so good, you know, even with those fractions tonight, and you don't even get tired, you know, keep coming. It's good. Describe the feeling at the top of the stretch when, when you're on top by five and widening. Uh, it was so great, and, you know, just try to go, try to, you know, try to go faster. You know, the season's over after a couple of stops, you know. Uh, I want to go fast mile. Can you try and put it into words? Uh, the low feeling I'm sure you had when he got injured. You've got this Colt that's uh, going to take you to all the big dances this year. You get sidelined, but to be back here, you've now won five in a row, and here you are in the Breeders' Crown Winner's Circle. That's great, you know, and when I got hurt, that was the reason uh, I want to come back so quick. I don't want to, you know, have too many offs like that, you know. I don't want to miss him, you know. Yeah. You've driven some great ones. Gallo Blue Chip comes to mind. Yeah. You rate this guy right up there with him? Uh, I don't know which one's better, both. They're great. I can pick one. They both even for me, you know. I can tell it's emotional for you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, again, Dan Dubé, rock and roll heaven, a coronation of a champion tonight. Let's join Heather for more winning reaction. Yeah, I'm here with Bruce Saunders, a trainer. That was so nice. He said he was going to stand down on the hill a little bit so that I could be up near him. Um, three words, I love him. Oh my gosh, this horse just makes my heart beat so much faster than it already does. Is this mean like he's like horse of the year or what? Oh, I have no idea. That's up to the voters. They'll have some hard decisions. All we can do is the best uh, we can, and he certainly distinguished himself again tonight. I mean, those were some bizarre fractions, uh, and I think he just got a little lonely on the front end, and Danny wasn't going to drive him out anymore, and he had to to win, but uh, he brings his game face. Man, he's tough. You know, he's not a big horse. In fact, I heard that his nickname's Little Hot Dog. He's a firecracker. Uh, he has got a huge gait for his size, and he's extremely fluid and efficient. Uh, he doesn't waste any energy. Um, he just has all the all the ingredients that a great horse needs to have. I couldn't agree with you more. Oh, I love this horse. He's been a fan favorite. Congratulations, Bruce. Thanks, Heather. I appreciate it. Thank you. Guys, back to you. Little hot dog. <laughs> or rock and roll heaven. I think I'd go with my formal name. If I was the horse, rock and roll heaven, 240, 210, 210, Fred and Ginger. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, You're on yeah, it. Yeah, all right, 620, 560, and we will see. And, you know, we, the other thing we have to talk about, Lou, is this, that with a one-to-five shot winning the race, if you bought the race with everybody second, third, and fourth in yeah. the Superfecta, yeah. you got back $1,300. That's insane. Wow. It's insane. A, a one-to-five shot. $1,300 in the Superfecta. Amazing. But, you know, i got to tell you, it was a wonderful thing to happen for Dan Dubé, who came back off that injury. He's a terrific guy. This is a terrific little horse. And and to hear that crowd, I can't get over the sound of the crowd. Yeah, we both heard the same thing, even though we had these these headsets on. And the crowd is just, just down the side uh, to us here. It, it, but it came right through. It came right yeah. through. And here, let's hear it. Let's, yeah, let's listen. It. Yeah. See, you're hearing, you're hearing the, the go, go, go. Yeah, and then you heard some uh, horse of the year honors yeah. thrown his way, and a very knowledgeable crowd turned out here. And I have to think uh, also, Steve, that because of what's going on at the Meadowlands right now, uh, the, this Pocono track is just off the uh, 
the interstate in, 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 in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Turnpike, and not far from Interstate 80, which runs east and west, goes right into New York. And I'm yep. wondering if some of the race fans are starting to find their way down here now. I think they probably are. I mean, it's, again, it's a first-class facility, and there's, there's never been a better car to harness racing from top to bottom than they've had here tonight. And it was capped by this incredible, incredible race by Rock and Roll Heaven, who stamped himself as a horse for the ages. It was a great night. Uh, first time that they brought all 12 of the Breeders' Crown races together on, yep. on one day. I think it was a good idea. And they're, they're going to continue it next year as well. Hopefully, yeah. I think it's a great idea. And I think the fans came out to, to support it. And what a capper this was. All right. Dubé holding his trophy. 12 of them handed out tonight. We'll be back with more racing. We got a feature race to show you as well before we leave you. Come on back with us right after this.